Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel and today's video is going to be on the complete line of Express Paints, what I think of them, how each one could be used, and my issues with them, if there are any, which there are. <laughs> First of all, these express paints, as their name suggests, are transparent paints designed for a quick and easy paint job over miniatures, primed in pale or at least bright color primer that when dry, leave the crevices and recesses of the miniature in deeper colors than the raised area, offering a highlight and shadow all in the one coat of paint. I can say that they can also be used through the airbrush with a bit of airbrush flow improver if using smaller nozzles to make some beautiful acrylic canvas art as well. But their purpose in life was to allow miniature painters to use these paints to apply a single layer onto the miniature or maybe two for more shadowing with great results and very little time spent at it. Well here I'll be going through each of the paints of the line in alphabetical order and letting you know what I think of them and where to potentially use them as we go. So this first one is Black Lotus. This was the very first color I used from this line. Well, I should say this is the very first color I used on a miniature. And my initial thoughts were, wow, this Black Lotus is not that black and yikes, this is not flowing as smoothly as I thought it would. Um, I found that contrast paints and army painters new 2.0 speed paints are much easier to flow out of a brush can no matter what brush you choose but this one is a bit more picky to get a nice smooth coat which is why you will see me switching through brushes that I had previously found to be useful until I do find the one I like. Now I have found that each of the various colors are a little bit different from each other but the majority or at least half are like this black lotus color where I think they could use a little of the express medium about a one to one ratio of paint and medium to thin it out and render its flow much smoother over larger surface areas as that were found on these conquest models I am using. Over smaller surface areas or surfaces with carved textures like, for example, the hair of this horse, the express paints are easier to work with. And if you want to see black, you can simply apply multiple layers, allowing you to reach the level of darkness that you want, where you want it, and the level of highlight that you want, where you want it. But over larger surface areas like this model, I would suggest using the Express Medium or Vallejo's Airbrush Flow Improver into the mix and that will really allow for the raised surfaces to become smooth and less patchy as this one as more of the paint will stay within the recesses and not leave patches. But I get better at using them as I go. I just was expecting something different from this first one so I, it's, I've gotten better at it but I wanted to show you what it's like if you don't use the right brush because, as I said, it's picky. This next color is Cardinal Purple, a very nice bright pink magenta that wasn't any nicer to apply onto the miniature as the Black Lotus was, so I found myself switching up brushes again towards the end. But despite the trouble, it is a lovely vibrant pink and if nothing else, I would use it as a mix to tint other colors or I'd simply thin it down with a medium a little and build up to this bright color over multiple layers. This would of course be brighter still over a white primer so I could see I could see myself using this for a pink glow if used through the airbrush in particular and I think I should stress yet again that I'm only having trouble putting a smooth coat over these models because they have broader flatter surfaces than perhaps these express paints are good for. This next color is Caribbean turquoise, the same color I applied two layers onto my nails with. I very much like this color and this is much more in line with what I was expecting. It still has the slight persistent bubbling 
if you're a bit too vigorous with the paints and even if you're calmer with the paints there might be tiny little bubbles that are appearing in it that you want to make certain that you pop before the paint dries because if you don't it'll leave a little dot in it but I really like this color the other ones not so much they need to have their medium but out of the bottle I like this one for sure and there are multiple just like this one and if you have the medium handy then you can turn any of them any of the express paints into a consistency like this the next color is called copper brown and i like this for a wood color as well as thin down over gold metallics to offer some shading to the gold or thin down a little less over copper metallics for the same reason now these all will dry matte so you want to keep that in mind when going over a metallic you probably want to highlight the metallic after you're done but i still like them very much for shading warm metallics uh, this horse's main body color is a combination of mostly copper brown with a small amount of velvet red which i'll show you once we get to the v and that's how i would use copper brown on a regular basis I mean as either alone or tinted with another color to offer me a wide range of browns. I do like this color. This fifth color is deep purple which I think looks best over a red or magenta base but I do like this color and just like I have said for the others I think it works best when the downed a little boy it's medium or flow improver to show it off in use, the inner padding on the saddle and the undercolor of this soldier's cloak were done with the deep purple. I still hold that it looks best and more natural when applied over a red, so I'd suggest using the cardinal red first, letting that dry, and then applying this over top. But as you can see, it works just fine as a uh, maybe less vibrant as what it could be, but still a nice pretty purple for clothing. Maybe for hair. The next color is dwarf skin. And though I know this is a typo and it should be dwarf skin, I think it sounds so cute as dwarf skin. So that's what it is in my books. Plus everyone will know exactly what color I'm talking about when I call it that. I like this dwarf skin just fine. I tried it out on a couple of models as I was learning the colors and it looked like a great paler skin color to me. Though again, I would suggest thinning it down, and I did find when I applied it to the soldier, it was a little too brown for what I wanted. So I ended up adding just a touch of purple to the dwarf skin to pinken its hue. A purple like deep purple did the trick. In fact, it was a mix of plasma red and storm blue that I had used to shadow the plasma red flag. But the hue would be very close to deep purple if you wanted to recreate a pale skin tone with reddish hues. I also used dwarf skin to tint this pile of gold and used copper brown as the wood and a thin black lotus as the metal lock. And I think it's looking pretty good. This next color, gloomy violet, is the bright purple of the bunch. I have found, like I said before, that the darker colors are really the ones that need more of the express medium added. It makes sense, I suppose, that the darker ones need more medium since presumably the lighter ones either have more medium or less of the gel-like pigment that makes the paint more difficult to spread over surfaces smoothly. Either way, that is something to remember. The darker the paint in this line, the more likely you'll need the medium to smooth it out. Which follows with this imperial yellow, which went on so much smoother. Though that may be an illusion simply because any splotching of this color would be less visible. Either way, this one works out nicely, just as is. And if you wanted it to be more yellow than the first coat provides, a second coat after the first one has dried would make an easy bright yellow color. This next one is lizard green and you can really tell that it could use a tiny bit of medium just to make it go smoother over the miniature and also remove the ability of the paint itself to create bubbles, those nasty bubbles. This color does make a very nice lizard green but I would also use it for plant life. I like how dark its shadows are. I think it would be very natural. 
This next color is called Martian Orange, and of all the ones that came before, this one flows the best onto the miniature. I think a banana yellow would be even nicer underneath it than the ivory I used to bring out that orange better. And this might make a nice rust if thinned down and applied liberally, or applied just as is but dabbed off with a sponge. This one is called Mystic blue and just like the orange before it, it is much simpler to smooth across surfaces, having less of the gel-like consistency of the others. This would also do well as a blue glow effect, being vibrant enough for the use, and definitely a nice sky blue through the airbrush. Or over metallic. So pretty. This one is nuclear yellow, and I think this would make a great shadow color for the imperial yellow to give an extra bit of contrast from highlight color to shadow color since the imperial yellow shadows are more subtle. This one is another one with much better flow than the others and I find it still requires some last minute checking of bubbles but overall it is a great color. If you remove all excess it would also make a great under color for Martian Orange. This is Omega Blue, a beautiful vibrant deep blue Though I would suggest some thinning if you aren't dealing with a very small area to color. Since it's so deep and vibrant, it would be easy to spot at a distance. Even if in very small quantities, like gemstones on a miniature's armor. And maybe people's eyes too. This next one is Orc Skin, and it also smooths onto the miniature very well without thinning. Other Orc Fleshes are generally a darker or more forest green color than this one, but I like this one. As a starting point and if I wanted to go deeper then I would either wet blend a darker green like lizard green or troll green to make the shadows darker or use a mix of the above as a second layer after this one. I'd also just use this one for summertime plant life and tree leaves probably over a yellow just so the highlights are more a vibrant yellowy green. The next color is Plague Green, which is very aptly named. You could easily see this as lichen growing in pools or over nesting Nurgle creatures. It is a little more patchy like any of the darker colors seem to be, but you can either add medium to smooth it out or accept the patchiness for your overgrowing algae. I think if you put it over a light military green or tan primer, it would make a great shadow color for a military uniform particularly with a little medium in the mix, so that oh, there is no patchiness you have to worry about. This next one is Plasma Red, a fire engine kind of red that's nice and bright with just one coat. Because it provides a bit less shadow than many of the others, you might put too much on. So I'd suggest putting a thinner coat of this on, and if you want to shadow it, using a mix of it and deep purple as your shadow, mostly deep purple. Or add one of the blues thinned with medium to all of the shadow areas and underbellies first and then apply this color over top the blue for a more realistic shading after the blue is dried of course this would also be a good shadow to the martian orange either through wet blending or glazing over top the orange once that one has dried after thinning it down with a bit of medium this next color is called Snake Green, and I like the consistency and color of this one a lot. It's so pretty. It would make a great complementary color to the earlier Caribbean Blue or Lizard Green, or a lovely shadow color to Orc Skin if mixed with Orc Skin as a second coat used subtly in the underbelly areas. Can you imagine the pretty scaled miniatures you could paint with this? Dragons and Lizard Folk? Maybe Mermaids? The next one is called Space Grey, and I think this one is the least ready to use just out of the bottle. I don't care for it that much, though. So in small areas, you wouldn't have any difficulty. It's just that areas of any larger size don't cover that well on our left patchy, which I don't think is particularly pleasing for this color. I definitely suggest using the medium for this one, and here I demonstrate what the medium can do to even this very patchy paint. Like I said, having the medium handy to thin out paints will make painting miniatures go much smoother. Where would I use this color? Well, once it's thinned out, as you can see, it makes a nice shadow color for an aged statue, ivory wraps, 
or rocks if you'd like a bit of cold tone to them. It definitely has its place in the greys and whites for sure. I just think you need to add some medium or or if you don't want to go ahead with medium, then water. Anything to thin it out from what it currently is. The next color to show is called Storm Blue, and I like it as it is a desaturated blue color, which is great for clothing. On soldiers, you don't want to have particularly eye-catching colors on, or more muted dragon scales and water and stuff like that. I think the more muted hue works well here on this miniature it also goes on fairly smoothly for a darker paint in this range i like it i think it would work nicely as mystic blues shadow as well if you wanted more muted uh, colors in the shadows and maybe with a little bit of the gloomy violet mixed in to add a bit of purple to it this one is called templar white and i think this one works great for a shadow for white both for inorganic things like statues and cloth and such but also for hair or fur I think you'd want to dry brush a teeny bit of white over the most raised areas once this one has dried for extra contrast. Maybe, because I also like it just as it is. This color is Troll Green, and I like it for happy plants and a shadow for orc green if you want to maintain a vibrant green. I also think this would look even better over a yellow, but I mean, it does look good just over this color ivory too. It's also vibrant that you can use it to make a variety of mixes. I think the snake green of the line would be a good shadow choice if you wanted to add a bit of color to this guy's shadows beyond the darker green. This one is called Velvet Red and it's very pretty and deep and definitely looks like blood. Flick a few flecks of this onto your miniature for a recently dried blood effect and I think you'll be pleased. This one could also mix really nicely with deep purple. I think you could use it all over the place. Dragon scales, clothing, blood. I might be fixating on blood a little too much in a completely non-worrying way, but also flowers, particularly if you start with cardinal purple and then finish in a wet blending fashion with this velvet red. Versatile color, I think, definitely. And lastly, we have Wasteland Brown. This one is more streaky than I would like, but again, you can fix it with just a little bit of medium or water. And if you aren't covering a large surface as these models, you shouldn't have any trouble using it. I can see this for wood and clothing if you mix it with other browns or thin it down a little or as staining on various surfaces. This one would also be nice to shadow gold metallics, either thin down with a medium or through an airbrush or mixed with airbrush gloss with satin varnish. So overall, I think that they take a little bit more work than Citadel Contrasts or the Army Painters 2.0 speed paints from my experience now, since more often than not, they seem to want a bit of medium or water to cover over smoothly. And because of their slightly gel-like consistency, they have a tendency to form little bubbles here and there that you'll want to get rid of before the paint dries. Again, if you aren't thinning it down with medium or water. So because I have the other lines, these wouldn't be necessarily my go-to paints. I found that I still like contrast paints the best after all this. But if you are looking for a quick paint job at a lower cost and you found it hard to control contrast paints, and still want to give this type of paint a try, then these might be the way to go. They are absolutely worth picking up and trying so you can see for yourself if they are a paint for you. If you wanted to try this kind of paint out, which I think has a place in the miniature market for sure, um, I would suggest either as glazing, even to brighten up a blue that you have already put down, a red that you have already put down, bring shadow to a color that um, is just too opaque. These definitely have their place. I'll still be using, uh, I'm still prefer my contrast paints and I still like the 2.0 uh, speed paints more than these ones because of the way that they bubble and uh, don't flow as well as the others. Still easily fixed. I have to keep saying it's still easily fixed, but the fact that you have to fix it for an express paint means that to me they're just not quite there yet. Uh, that isn't to say that if you encounter in them in the store, I think you should give them a try. I think you will absolutely find a use for whichever one that you pick up because it is a great paint. 
It's just not my favorite. I hope that was clear. I th hope you will give them a shot. Maybe one or two at a time. See what you think. You should totally get back to me. See what you thought. There are some people who have tried them. Um, we've given them out at the store. People have bought them at the store. They've tried them. They like them. And there's a couple who don't. Maybe they were biased by my reaction. I'm not sure. But I think they're absolutely worth a shot. And you should tell me what you think. You should tell everyone what you think down in the comments below. So we've got the best review possible for these paints. I have not given up on these paints. Uh, I'm going to use them more through the airbrush, which I really enjoy using anyway. So you'll see that in the future. Maybe I'll give some um, specific paint reviews per my favorite ones. This is still an early impression on them. So we'll see. I hope this was useful to you. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Thank you very much, patrons, for your support. I really appreciate it. I hope you have had a fantastic Easter and lots of fun hobbying. I don't like saying negative things about things. When a very good paint company comes out and makes a paint and you don't like it, the very first thought for me is, am I using it wrong? I feel like I'm using it wrong. But I have used thousands of paints now. I think if they adjusted, I think if Vallejo just adjusted the ones that were more patchy to the ones, maybe besides the plague green, because I mean, it's plague green, it can be patchy. Um, but maybe the other ones just add a touch more of their just flow improver medium that would be nice on the other hand on the other hand uh paints often come in concentrated form so so you could consider this just to be a concentrated form of it you add a bit of water because the water did seem to be just fine i tested it out with water generally i nowadays i wouldn't go ahead with water at all because it changes the chemical composition of the paint but i didn't care <laughs> i didn't care if i changed the chemical composition of the paint with these ones and uh, water definitely does work to to make them flow better which is great um it does however seem to bring on a more glossy effect once it's dried so the medium doesn't, the water does, so that is something to uh, consider. Or you could just use contrast medium with them, because <laughs> that definitely works. <laughs> it just it feels a little wrong, but <laughs> it works. Okay, I've gotten on too long for about this. Okay, bye-bye-bye.